Hi there, this is Jian Jian from Spokane Public Library again. And in this concluding episode of Ask an Emergency Preparedness Expert, our presenter, Vern Page, puts everything that we have learned so far into a real life situation and shows you how to apply that knowledge. We hope you have enjoyed this series and thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe. In this session, we're going to give a real life scenario of something that can happen in Spokane, has happened in Spokane, and uh, something that I personally have suffered from. And I want to I want to share. And that is where the temperature, the temperature, uh, drops severely drops and there's a power outage and as we have talked about in the past we live in a box that we call a home or an apartment but we live in a box and we depend on electricity to provide our life in that box and so when uh, winter hits there's always that potential that we could lose power and when that happens uh, at a very, very cold temperature, that is very concerning. So how do we sub survive, let's say 10 degrees below zero with no electricity? First of all, and simply the big picture is we camp out. We actually go camping just like summer, but we're going to camp in our home. and. Uh, we're going to find a place in our home that is most conducive to staying warm and having the space to interact and uh, to maintain a, a, some way of a normalcy. Now, we want to close off that space to retain the heat at that cold temperature. Now, this is the area uh, I chose, and it's kind of a little kitchen family uh, room area. And I took a quilt and I blocked off an open doorway so that we would not lose heat through that. A big mistake, uh, this was my wife's uh, mother's quilt and I tacked that up and she was not real happy with me. You probably, they want to really think about what you're putting up there. But uh, anyway, this is what I did. And then I sealed windows. There's lots of ways of sealing those windows for insulation. You can use cardboard. Uh, you can use blankets or quilts. Uh, but what we found is an amazing, simple form of insulation is bubble wrap. And you can bubble wrap the inside and you can bubble wrap the outside. Huge saver of energy. And it allows light to come through, which is cheerful. And it, that's good. Uh, my downstairs windows, we can, what I did is I used some insulation, but you can also use pillows to block that a little bathroom area you want to protect there. Uh, because the big thing we are concerned with initially is pipes breaking. If it gets cold, if it's 10 below outside, that cold will come through. And if there's pipes in that area, they will freeze and you will have breakage. So, two options that we have. One is to keep the water in those pipes warm. Now, most all of us have done this, unless you're new to the Spokane area or a cold country. Uh, we just let our faucets, all of our faucets, just slowly uh, allow water to go through. That water's around 40, 50 degrees, and that just keeps the system warm. Now, another thing we can do uh, to keep warm is to warm those little areas where we have the plumbing. This is an old house, and I, I wish I had shown the plumbing in the, in the ceiling here in the basement. Uh, the bathroom, the kitchen, and the laundry room, which is downstairs, all the plumbing was in one little area. In this case, we used a propane heater and just kept that little area of pipes warm. Very simple. Every house is going to be different. Uh, the thing you can do is to use a candle. Here's our prayer candle in a, in a mug, which uh, we have. Uh, 
very simply, uh, that candle will last for two or three days. Two or three days, and it provides just a little bit of heat, and if we just allow the door to be slightly open, that will prevent those uh, pipes and things from freezing up, and will give a little warmth to that wall as well. Here's just a little liquid candle. Okay, option number two. Option two is to winterize the system. Now, some may have an air compressor and may know how to you know, blow out their pipes, but most of us don't have that. So what's the next option? First of all, if you have water, go ahead and uh, store some of that. Now, fill your bathtub up with water. Get some of your cooking uh, uh, pots and things uh, and just fill them with water that you're going to be using over the next few days as long as this outage occurs and uh, and then shut the system off. Go to your main valve and shut it off and uh, something also very important you want to shut your water heater off in case that electricity comes back on or turn your natural gas off. That's just an added little protection for a, a potential problem that would occur once the power comes back on. Then you're going to drain your pipes. You start with the highest level of your home. Um, uh, if you have an upstairs, open up all your valves upstairs, uh, including toilet. Just open those up. Remember that the water's off now. You just open them up where air can get in. Then you come to the lowest uh, uh, sinks and uh, toilets and things at your main level or basement, and you open those up. So you're basically opening everything up and allowing the gravity to take the water down through the pipes and drain it out and keep that water. You know, that's good. Now, would there possibly be a little water left in certain little junctions and things? Absolutely. That could happen. Every home is different, but it could happen. And it is possible that one little section there in here might freeze later. That's why we have our water turned off, so it's not going to damage anything when the water comes back on. And you'll be able to hear it go, oh man, we got water flowing, we got to find the leak. Then we turn up and we go fix it. So it's just a protection there. Okay, setting up your living area. You want lighting. And uh, uh, you get your emergency lighting out, whether it be your lantern. Um, and uh, a lot of different kinds of uh, uh, lights now are available. It's amazing technologies have gone into these. Uh, and uh, you're going to place those in uh, strategic areas that uh, can be used. And then you're going to set up your heating. You're going to bring in your... your uh, Emergency heating, uh, propane, uh, not propane, but the kerosene is a really pretty good heater for a lot of BTU output. And uh, of course you have that fuel with it. And uh, we've talked about that in other sessions, but you're gonna keep that little area, keep that heat in that, that, uh, that living area. You can use propane. Uh, propane generally does not have the BTU output. But uh, these are efficient, they're clean, they're designed for indoors, they're not a problem uh, with, uh, with that. And you're probably going to have a, a little hose attachment that, that we've talked about in the past attached to a propane tank. So there's your heat. You might choose to get some of these small heaters uh, for those little areas that may have plumbing that you want to make sure uh, if it's starting to get a little cold to take take that uh, uh, just warm that up a little also setting up your emergency cooking area the uh, what I've done is I'm gonna bring in my camp stove uh, which I use for summer camping and I'm gonna bring it into my area and it happens to be my kitchen and this is a propane type camp stove that perfectly fine to burn indoors if I have a blue flame. Uh, some of you may have a, 
a natural gas stove uh, with uh, a blue flame that you use all the time. We're doing exactly the same thing except we're using propane. And propane produces, when it burns, heat, okay, and it produces carbon dioxide and water. And that's exactly what we do. We eat sugar, we eat fuel, we exercise and produce heat, and our body warms up, and we exhale CO2, carbon dioxide, and water. Same process, and it's clean. Now, if the flame is not blue, you're producing other molecules. You're not burning completely, and you can produce carbon monoxide, which is not healthy. In this case, I've got to get my stove into the garage or the patio or get it out of that living space. Okay, now, cooking on a barbecue at 10 below zero outside, they do not work. And so don't rely on a barbecue for your cooking if it gets really cold, because you can't bring this inside your house. Okay, I'm going to cook. In, in many cases, I'm just going to cook right on my, my regular stove. I'm just going to move my device over to the stove and cook with it. Now, setting up your sleeping area. That's the last of your setup. And you can bring mattresses from your beds on your children, grandchildren, wherever, and you bring those into your living area and you just camp out on the floor. Kids love this. Here's a family in 15 that was telling me that uh, they came down in their family here, and there were five of them, and they had a ball. It, it was so fun for them. Bring out the games and make an event. Make memories that they'll remember forever. That's because you're prepared. So I, I love this ancient uh, proverb that uh, the prepared woman, the wise woman, she has no fear of winter. She laughs without fear of the future. Why? Because she prepared. Your family will survive. Why would you risk not being prepared? Prepare for the possibilities that can happen. And 10 below zero is a real possibility in the Spokane area. And we can lose power in those times so you're preparing for that possibility. Don't think in your mind you're going to prepare for the probability because this gets people in trouble. Oh, it's going to be a good winter. I don't need to prepare. I'm not going to get in a car accident. I'm not going to wear my seatbelt. And the list goes on and people get in trouble. Being prepared. It's a little work, obviously, and it's going to cost a little bit, but oh my goodness, it's so worth it. Because when you think of the alternative, uh, this is good. You're, you're very wise. Have water, have food, and have uh, energy. Energy available to be able to get through that period of crisis. Fuel's very important, obviously, at 10 below zero. So, in review, uh, you're going to camp out. You're going to set your uh, a section of your home up for camping. Uh, you insulate that area so you do not lose heat, excess heat. You're going to protect your plumbing from freezing and breaking and causing serious damage. And you're going to set up the lighting, the heating, and the cooking area, and the sleeping area. Uh, have fun because you've prepared and always store energy, water, and food for the possibility. Now, uh, for additional information on this, go to our website, Spokane Home Prep, and uh, you can uh, follow through the topics and you can download uh, additional information as well.